Hi, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and today it's hard to believe, but we're way over the hump now because with our embroidery sampler, which is what we're doing today, we are on block eight. So in this lesson, we are going to have our first go at a three hooper. Now, there's also a way if you have a Bernina 880 plus um, that you could do this as a two hooper. Um, and I do address that in some of the videos, but for the most part, I really would like you to try to do this in three hoopings. So we're working with two different files from our Rugs to Riches CD. And uh, I also created a zipped file for you in the rescue files so when in the handout so that you can be a little bit more comfortable if you don't if you don't like making your own design. So let's talk about that handout. So, you know, after the lesson airs, I email all of you the PDF of the lesson. And in that PDF are links, and the links can take you to um, time-stamped areas of the video that you're watching right now, and also it will take you to your rescue files. So, of course, you have to purchase the curriculum from us because I do not want to give away my my friends at OESD's hard work because they work very hard creating these designs and they are not free. So we cannot share them out for free, but we do like to give you the video as inspiration and as a way to see what we do here. So the first steps for doing this, as always, is going to start with the software, but I'm also going to show you how to do this on the machine. But let's look at that software tutorial right now. Well, let's have a look at how we're going to change the colors on your design. And there's two of them that we're doing. We're doing um, CC30409 and CC30410. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the colors and then we're gonna break apart the design so that um, this little green part actually becomes a different color. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take our design and go to our design tab up here at the top of the screen and choose thread colors. And you know, we uh, in the first class made that thread chart. So I'm just going to reference that again, embroidery sampler 2020. There it is. All right. So um, what is going to be the yellow flowers is actually going to be the purple in our case. So we're going to assign that. And then the leaves are going to be our air and green. So we're going to assign that. Then the um, leaf outlines are going to be the grasshopper. The design work piece in the middle, that lattice, that's going to be our blue. And then the little peach flowers is going to be the magenta. Do, 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 do. There it is. And now all I want to do in this case is add a couple more colors. And one of those colors um, needs to be the light blue. Okay, I think that's everything. I might not need this other color, but I'm just going to leave it there just in case. So now I'm going to say apply and OK. And now you can see my design there, right? Yay! All right, so now what I want to do is I want to focus on this green. And the best way that I know of to do this is to actually make sure that color film is open and go to color film and we're going to scroll, scroll, scroll until we see this one here. And we're going to change that to blue. And then we're going to scroll down until we get to the other one. And now we're going to change that one to blue. Now, I just realized after seeing this that I do need my midnight blue color. So we're going to go back up here to design and thread colors. And remember that number seven that I didn't assign yet? We're going to make that one midnight. And now let's say, OK, perfect. Now we're going to go back up here or down here. We are looking for the green outline right here. 
and let and then we also want to pick so hold down control and select this we want to select those two and make it midnight and these two hold down control and then make this one midnight perfect now we're going to look at the design like this and we have a little bit of cleaning up to do so first thing is we need to determine when do we want this blue to stitch out so i'm going to let all of the green stitch out first so see how i drag that together so now those two blues at least are going to stitch out together and now i'm going to drag it after this last green leaf so there we have our lilac, our green, our light blue, and then let's do all of the green outline of the leaves together. So I'm gonna take that one and drag that one up. And then just to humor me, I'm gonna put the outline last. And I like that very much. Let's click away. I think it looks good. So now after you do all of this stuff, you want to save it. So I'm just going to say file, save as, and I'm going to save this in my my documents folder just because this is an example. I'll find it later. Underscore you're gonna take the time to save it on your computer exactly where you wanna save it. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing to the other design. And this one, we have a few more little extra things. So let's not forget, let's go back to design and thread colors. And we're gonna to go to our embroidery sampler palette, which is already open. And I think this time we're gonna need about eight colors. And now, um, For the yellow flowers, we already know that that's going to be the little lilac color. The leaves are going to be our green. Our leaf outlines are going to be the grasshopper. The lattice is going to be our ocean blue. And our peach flowers are going to be the boys and basinberry pardon me and then the center flower outlines i want to be midnight and the magenta oh that's a new one that we added make sure you pick daffodil for that one and then we also want the light blue, which is the country blue. Okay, perfect. So there are all of the colors that we're using. I'm going to apply and say okay. So it's almost there, but remember what we did to our other design? Well, we want to do that here as well. So what I'm going to do is go down here to our color film and break it apart by shape. So now I want to pick this one. Oop. Where'd it go? Hold down control and pick the other and change that to the blue color. Perfect. Now we're going to go down to those outlines. And I'm going to select, hold down control and select midnight. Select hold down control and pick midnight. And now I'm going to go all the way down to, let's see here. Nope. I want to go to, I think it was the lilac. Here we go. The dot in the center. Let's make that one yellow. All right. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of shift our designs around a little bit like we did the other. So I'm taking the blues and putting those together. 
Then I'm going to take our greens and put those together. Then I'm going to take our dark ones and put those together. And now I want this yellow one to be at the very end. There it is. Perfect. Now we're going to save this one. And I'm just adding lilac at the end of it so I'll know that it's been changed. Now we can build our design and that's pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is select our hoop and I'm going to use the mega hoop today. And I'm going to fit to hoop. And now I'm going to just select this by dragging a box around it. And um, I don't actually, I can copy this, control C. And I'm going to go to this one, select the hoop again to the mega hoop. Zoom to hoop and control V. And now that is a design that goes on top. Do control V again and drag this one down to the bottom. All right, so now here's a little trick that I want to do. I want to select that bottom one and group it. So we can go to edit. So we can select this bottom one to group it and we go to arrange, group. We're going to group the center one. So we select it, arrange, group. Top one, select it, arrange, group. Now this is going to allow us to kind of easily fudge these little guys together. So I don't have to worry about clicking on this and then it falls apart on me. I've kind of glued it together a little bit. All right, once I got a configuration that I like, I'm going to add my center. So now what I'm going to do is say, copy control C and control V makes a copy. And now that's going to go right there in the middle. And now I can hide my hoop for a second here. There we go. And now I'm going to take this one and control C, control V to make a copy and bring this one up to the corner like so. And now control V again and put this one over here. How's that look? So now we want to take one of these and put on the other side so I can lasso it by drawing a box around it to select it. And did you know that you can also make a copy by right clicking and dragging? And that's what I'm doing just there. And there's our design. Pretty easy, pretty fun. Now, this isn't going to fit in our hoop. I mean, quite frankly, this isn't going to fit in a jumbo hoop. So we are going to have to embroider this in at least two hoopings. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to select this row and I'm going to cut control X and I'm going to open a new folder or a new design. And I'm going to say control V. And there it is with my mega hoop and everything. And now I can save this as my right side. So we say file, save as, right. And now I can go over here to this middle and I could save this as its own design if I have a maxi or a jumbo hoop. But what I'm gonna do is lasso these three in the middle Control X, 
get a new file started. Control V, fit to hoop, and now save this as left. Now lastly, I'm going to go back to our original design, control A, let's look at this hoop, and I want it to do automatic centering for me. I'm going to... All right, so now we're going to save this one as center. Now here is my little tip. Each time we do this, it's creating a lot of different colors. So we want to kind of pick those and have them stitched together. So just go to your arrange sequence by color. So first we're going to control A, select everything, then go to arrange sequence by color. And then that's going to, you know, take this down and stitch it in the proper order so that you're not having to worry about the order of things. Then hit save. And yes, that's fine. And now we're gonna do that to the right. So we control A, design, or sorry, arrange by color, okay, and save. Yes. And now let's do it one last time to the left side. So arrange, sequence, by color, OK, save, yes. And now we're ready to send these designs to the machine and you can get started stitching. So now that you've got the design created and you're ready to stitch, you need to determine, well, how many hoops do you want to do? And then we need to stabilize that fabric. So we're going to take our top fabric and we're going to use, um, this time I'm using Hydra Stick or Stable Stick Stabilizer, depending on what you want to use. And we're going to put one layer of that uh, behind the right side of our fabric. And we're going to kind of draw a center line down the edge just to find the center of everything. You'll see. You'll see in the video. So um, let's watch that. So this month we have another 18 inch square of our fabric. You can see it's this one here. Um, it's one of the Allison glass ones. The informations are in the handout. And um, what I'm gonna do is, I know some of you, the your favorite is not the hydro stick, but it truly is mine when I'm doing a lot of hoopings. And we're gonna do three hoopings today in the mega hoop. Now, for those of you that have another machine that can only take a smaller hoop, don't forget that you're gonna probably need to hoop this nine times, but it's a simply fast design when it's a singular one. So keep that in mind. But with multiple hoopings, this hydro stick, tends to stay well, it's nice and stiff. Um, we don't have it in 18 inches, um, in large enough to have one sheet that's 18 inches, but we're gonna just overlap a little bit. So I'm gonna lightly spray this stabilizer so that it adheres to the back of our material. Now, here's a tip, if you get it too wet, then you are going to be needing more water to remove it, which will then leave more residue on your work. So just missed it. And I'm using the Nifty Notion spray bottles. Uh, these are back in stock if you didn't get one the first time around. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna, it curls to the shiny side. The shiny side is the glue side. So I'm just gonna mist this lightly here. All right, so now I'm gonna line this guy up down at the end here like this just kind of going off of the edge of the fabric a little bit there we go and now i'm going to spray this piece here we go make sure i got coverage here okay and now this goes on like that and as you can see I'm overlapping it by just a, about an inch so now that I'm good with that I'm just gonna let this dry 
for a little bit. And then I'm gonna mark it. And what I'm gonna do is mark the center of this 18 inch square. Marking the center is going to allow me to place my first design in. Like I said, I'm gonna be showing you how to do three mega hoopings. So I'm gonna do the center first and then put the right side down and then the left side down. If you are doing this with the um, nine hooping, you're gonna put the hooping in the center and then I don't care if you go left, right, top, bottom, whatever, but then you're gonna make a row then you'll come out and you'll do one here, here. I'll show you, you're gonna see in the handout, but, um, but that's how you're gonna put your stabilizer on this month. My piece is dry and it's time to mark the center of the vertical and the center of the horizontal. I've grabbed and dragged out my larger ruler. This is the 20 and a half inch ruler. And so I'm gonna just line up my nine inches cause 18 inches, half of 18 inches is nine inches. So now this is lined up on the edge, on the nine inch edge. And now I'm gonna draw my blue line to mark my vertical center placement. Now I am marking it a little super extra dark for those of you that are looking at this with the camera, but at home you might wanna have a lighter hand because that means it will just require more water to dissolve that. So now I'm going to mark nine inches again down here. And I'm going to use the mega hoop to hoop this up. Here is our mega hoop. Of course, it is the one that is about the same length as the maxi and the jumbo, but it's a little bit narrower. So those of you with the five series machines can use this as an alternative to the large oval hoop or the midi hoop. This is the base of it. And if you notice on the base, there are two tighteners here. Um, and you know what you really do, you should evenly distribute the tightness on the hoop. And if you have a hard time, as you know, getting those little screws to tighten, you can use your hoop key do. All right, so finally, we're gonna need our placement template. This is our placement template for the uh, Mega Hoop. And if you notice these purple lines on it, the ones with the purple grid, you get two kinds in a Mega Hoop. The purple grid are for all the new machines, but there are a few like the Aurora and the 630, 640 Artista machines that do embroidery that have orange. So those orange templates are what you're gonna use for those machines. I also wanna note on here, all of the new templates, they have little lines determined for what kind of foot. If you look there, there's our number 26 foot. That's the one that we're gonna to use today with our embroideries, but then there's also the 43 and there's the 44. So just, just thought you might wanna know that. And then of course, with any of these oversized templates like this, you need your little template clips, which is what this is. And then because this hoop is so long and almost rectangular, the mega hoop comes with these wishbone clips. I use them maybe 60% uh, of the time. So I'm gonna start with putting my template in my hoop like this. And then I'm gonna lay my template down right here. Now, don't get your knickers in a twist if this isn't lining up perfectly, all right? That's the horizontal way. Remember how I had you extend your stabilizer? Well, why don't we do it this way, okay? So now I'm just gonna try to aim, this is my center line right here, and I'm gonna aim to put my mega hoop placement right there. Now, as for the bottom of your mega hoop, depending on, if you have an older machine that you're using, you need to be able to position this. That's position one, position two, position three. On our newer Berninas, we only have to worry about keeping it in this middle position too. And I think most of you doing the class today are using the machines that can take this without repositioning it. If you have the Master Hooper, I showed you that last month, that could be helpful for you, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it without it. Okay, I got it nice and taut here. And I also need to kind of wiggle it a little bit to get it straighter. 
There we go. And now I'm going to just squeeze this right down in the hoop. All right. Now, the thing that I'm going for most is that the template is straight, not that it's exactly on the spot. So if you can look here, see how my little line is a little bit below my spot, but for the most part, it's straight. So this is our first maiden voyage. So let's just go ahead and say, boom, we got this. We have other ways that we're gonna line up our right side and our left side. So let's take it to the machine, woohoo. Okay, so now we're gonna stitch it out and I used the Bernina 880 Plus Standard Edition to show you how to stitch it out. But like I say in the video in just a moment, if you have a seven or a five series machine, the instructions are pretty much the same. You're just, you know, gonna be threading your machine normally and not like with the robot like the Bernina 880 Plus, but the operating system is exactly the same. So let's have a look at that. So I have transferred the designs that I created over to my USB stick. So let's have a look at them here. So we've got the block center, because I named it block center. Then we've got block eight left, and then there's also a block eight right for those of you at home, but guess what? block eight left and block eight right are exactly identical. So with that in mind, I want you to look at the difference in these. We used the two designs this month and I opted to do kind of a nine patch. So our block center, as you can see here, has that little flower in the center of it. And it's gonna go next to a left block and then a right block on the other side. And we're gonna stitch this one up first. Now, I do, I bet you're wondering, about this here. So this is a most of, this is two thirds of the block. So if you wanted to do this in a two hooper and you've got the maxi and the jumbo hoop, you can certainly do that. And you're gonna do that with um, stitching two units together and then adding a third unit. And you're gonna add, this. Is, so this is the left piece and the center piece, and then you would add the right piece. Does that make sense? All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you the three hooping technique. So we're gonna to go to block eight center, and there it is in our hoop. And now what I wanna do is go ahead and just calibrate that the, the right hoop is on here. All right, it wants me to put the hoop on. I'm glad to do that. There we go. Squeezing it on and saying, okay. All right, so now my hoop is on and now I'm in my stitching screen, but I actually wanna go back to the edit screen. And now I just wanna make sure that my needle is in the center position of my design. I can do that a couple different ways. This machine has pinpoint placement, so I can go right to the pinpoint placement grid and touch the grid and touch the center, and that will take my needle right to the center of the design if I don't have pinpoint placement. If I don't have pinpoint placement, I can go back to just my little edit screen, and I actually prefer to choose the hoop, and I like to press these little crosshairs right here, and that brings my needle right to the center of the hoop as well. So that's where I am. I'm gonna close out of here. Now I'm gonna use my little move around icon, and I'm gonna lower my presser foot. Now, I'm gonna use these multi-function knobs over here. You've seen me do this a million times, to move it to the center, up, down, and so forth, to get my needle right over those crosshairs. But now let's look down here in my hoop to see what's happening. All right, I'm gonna lower the presser foot, and it looks like I need to move it this way and back just a little bit, so that's what I'm gonna do. All right, I just moved it a little bit. So I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna say close here. I'm gonna stitch. 
and I've already determined what thread colors I'm going to use for my design. And as you saw in the software tutorial, I broke apart the design, did something a little bit fancy for you this month. If you don't feel comfortable doing that on your own, you can use the rescue file. So the first color is going to be the lilac. And what I did is I, I changed using um, a more sophisticated editing part of the design. I broke it apart and changed color because I just didn't like how the colors were working together. And of course, that's in the software tutorial. So don't forget to check that out. If you don't want to do that, you can certainly just change the colors any way that you like. You know how to do that by now. And then also, of course, you can use the res rescue file that we provide in the PowerPoint handout. Uh, so lilac is first, then we've got the green, and the green is um, the leaves mostly, and then there's a light blue, a dark green, the blue, um, I call it lattice, and then there's the magenta flowers, and then a last little outline. All right, so now we're just going to go back up to color number one and get started with our stitching. All right, I'm just finishing up our last color here on our first hooping. And uh, then I'm gonna remove it from the hoop. We're still gonna leave our stabilizer on, but I'm gonna take our right piece and put it over here and the left piece and put it over here and just make sure that when I hoop, I get those little um, pieces lined up here. So we're back here at our drawing board. I'm gonna remove the hoop. There we go. And then I'm gonna try to flatten out our embroidery just because, you know, it kind of wrinkled it up there and I want it to be flat. There we go. All right. And now I'm gonna still use my placement template, slip it here in my hoop. And now if you were really timid, you could print out a, a template that is of the right side and the left side just so you can place it like so but what i'm going to do is just make sure that i'm kind of um i'd say i am one two three three of those grid marks from the center is where i'm lining up my little flower buds here and i mean that's you know these little um, templates are nice because they do have the grid on them and it's also nice, I'm, I'm lining up my, I have my horizontal line still, so I'm lining my horizontal line up in the middle of the hoop. I'm one, two, three grid marks away, and now I'm gonna slip that into the hoop. Give it the old muscle muscle. Now, I have some embroidery in here. That means I'm gonna take my hoop key do and loosen just a little bit before I do my final tightening. So I did three turns. 
and three turns up there. So let's just try one more time, just to make sure everything is remaining straight. Here we go. Just gonna squeeze a little bit here, and squeeze a little bit here. Now, let me show you something. I do have a little bend from my hoop crease there. So I'm gonna just pull this a little bit. And now this is a situation where I'm gonna use my wishbone. See how they go right in here like this? I'm using my wishbone to kind of pull that a little extra, just like that. All right, I'm ready to take it to the machine now. Okay, here's where we finished up. I'm all done with that one. So now I'm gonna go back to my folder and select the right side. So there's my right side. And then like I did with the other one, I always go back to my hoop, find my center. And now this time I'm just going to pay attention to the needle being on the horizontal line. I don't have a left or right quite yet. So I'm gonna use virtual positioning for this. So let me go ahead and close out of this. My goal is to put my presser foot down and only pay attention to my needle starting at the center line. So it looks like I just need to move it up a little, little, little bit. Okay, I'm totally happy with that. Now what I wanna do is show you how I use virtual positioning to get my design just so those little pink buds are gonna kiss each other. And we have three little points where our pink buds are gonna kiss each other. And there's another one up here behind the machine. I'm gonna to touch my mega hoop again, and I'm gonna get rid of this one. And now, see how I can touch the little tips of my buds and that moves my needle right there? Well, I'm gonna try that middle one right on the tip of the bud, and then I'm gonna use my multi-function knobs to line this up just where I need it to be down in the hoop. So I'm gonna use my multi-function knob to turn this until it's just about kissing my previous design. I moved it over and down just a little bit. So now I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna to touch my screen up above and see if I like where that one's landing there. And it looks really good to me, but I'm just gonna to touch it again and then touch it down here. And you know what? I think everything looks pretty good. This one, if I could say something, I would say it needs to go up a little bit. So I just think I'm gonna to have to fudge this a little bit. Let's look, just so that they all look fairly good. Now, if you look at my original design, they're not perfect, perfect, touchy, touchy. So if you wanna have a little bit of margin of error, leave a little bit more distance in between these because then once it's quilted and everything, you're not gonna focus on your little buds kissing. So I'm ready to get this thing started again. All right, by the miracle of video, I was able to stitch our other side here. I promise you when I say that it looks pretty good. So now we just have to do what we just did on the other side. Now I want you to know, remember how I said I made you a left side and a right side? This is true, but I could just very easily take this right side that I just stitched and put it over here on the left side. But I'm just gonna pick the actual left side, you know, cause I made one after all. There it is. So now I've selected it. And just like uh, before, remember how I like to do that thing where I touch it over here on the side and then I'm gonna use my multi-function knobs here to move this guy. I'm gonna put my foot down. Okay, I think that one's in a good spot. So now I'm gonna touch it down here. Oops, I hit the wrong side. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's check down here. All right, I like it. I might, however, go one little bit up. Let's just try that. You know what? I'm really happy with this. So now I'm gonna rethread 
and just go through this process again. It's getting exciting because we're just finishing up. I just wanted to, while it does its last little bits, kind of show you our little points here. But I am liking it quite a bit. So this is gonna finish up. We're gonna remove the stabilizer. I'm gonna mark our circles for the couching and our outline design for the couching. And then we're gonna quilt this baby. All right, for those of you having a little bit of a time trying to remove the Hydra Stick Stabilizer, let's have a look at how I do it. Here's the finished product. Well, you know, with stabilizer on it and everything, but I didn't put much um, water on this. Remember when I squirted it? So I just wanted to show you how I'm gonna remove it. And I just kind of start peeling, just like that. And then I'm gonna pick it loosely off there. Notice I haven't gotten it wet or anything. I'm just peeling it off. Just like that. And um, you're just gonna try to get as much of this off as possible. All right, after you have the stabilizer removed, you're gonna put a layer of batting and then your backing. So backing goes uh, wrong side up, then the batting, and then your pretty embroidered top. So we're gonna mark it like in the video and we're gonna just get everything kind of put together with our free motion quilting. So let's do that. All right, bet you don't have one of these hanging around. Ha uh -huh, of course you do. All right, so this is the magic template that I used for the circles in here. So I'm gonna mark a little area that we're gonna quilt inside these circles. So I'm gonna mark it, and then we're going to quilt, and then we're going to do the couching. So let me just mark these for you. I think that looks pretty good. I had to switch pens. I think my other one's getting a little dry. So I'm just gonna go to this one now. Okay, so those are the four circles. And now I'm gonna go around the perimeter, kind of the same distance here, right? But we don't have to make a full circle. And I'll show you how this magical process works in just a moment. Okay, then one last ruler work thing. And by ruler work, I don't mean ruler work, I mean lining up a ruler. I'm lining this up about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the embroidery and making my vertical line. a quarter of an inch from the flower bud edge, and then making a vertical line. And I'm doing this all the way around. All right, now we're gonna, you know, we don't do anything here, but we're gonna go in the curve along the straight lines when we do our couching. But first, we're gonna do just a little bit of quilting. So I'm gonna sandwich this with my backing material, batting, and this together. And I'm gonna use the KK2000 basting spray. Hey, hey, look, it's BSR time. So um, 
what I'm going to do is a little cross hatching in my circles just to kind of flatten it down, add some dimension. Then I'm going to do some micro stippling in these little areas in all of our lattice. And then finally, I'm just going to free motion stitch this shape around my block. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get started in my cross hatching there in the circles. All right, so I'm gonna start right over here. I already made like a little lattice over here, but I'm gonna hop over here. Now you'll notice I'm not doing ruler work or anything like that. I am literally just using my Bernina stitch regulator foot, but I'm gonna just sew on those lines that I drew and I travel in the little circle area. Go back down, travel, go back up, travel, go this direction. Now, I couldn't see very well going in that direction, so if I go in that direction again, I probably should pivot my material around. Don't worry, we'll get another opportunity for that. Here we go. All right, see how the little white of the stitch regulator is kind of obstructing it? So I'm just gonna turn it around and go this way, and now I'm gonna just follow my blue line there we go now I'm gonna lift and pull using my freehand system to kind of release my tension and I'm gonna go on this side now Remember how I don't like going in this direction? So I'm gonna stop and turn. And come back. And now I'm gonna go around the circle again. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna do one last circle. Here's the direction I don't like to go in, so I'm going to pivot. All right, now it's time to stipple your heart out. I'm not going to give you a whole lot of instruction here, folks, because guess what? You should have learned how to stipple your heart out by now. We pull up our threads, and I'm going to just do a little travel stitch when I want to get from one of these lattice areas to the next. But I am going to turn my stitch length down to about 1.5. That's really tiny, but we're going to do some tiny micro stippling. And see how I'm just going to hop over there to do my traveling from this section. Do you notice what we're not doing today, boys and girls? We're not stitching in the ditch. All right, so now we are at the final stage of using our stitch regulator foot. I've done all the stippling in the little areas behind the flowers and in with the lattice and the cross hatching in our circles. And now I'm just gonna take a little trip around the perimeter of this.
What you saw me do there is I just increased the stitch length. Now it's not gonna matter because I'm gonna go over this area with couching, but just, it was, it was doing wacky weird things. All right, we're done with the quilting. Finally, it's time to couch. Ooh, what is that? Let's find out. So here is the number 43 couching foot. Now, I use this one quite a lot. It works really well with this La Espiga thread. Um, this one, you know, we played around a little bit th with this when we did our couching uh, episode back on uh, block two. But um, you feed this thread through this free motion foot, just like this. And then when you do your stitching, you're going to use it to just, you know, this will just hold this right in place and we free motion stitch. Now, if you wanna use thinner thread, there's a couple of options for you. So this is um, Dazzle Thread from Wonderfill. And this is a little bit thinner than the last Spiga. And with this one, I've used the number 72 foot and I put these little couch clips on. They snap right onto the bottom of the foot like that. And this is gonna work the same way, except this time we're holding a thinner thread. So I pick the thread that is the right thickness for the little hole in the bottom of that couch clip. So let me just show you, not on my precious right here, but I'm gonna show you on a little scrap how you do this. All right, so as you can see here, I've got a little slack of this off. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take my freehand system out and I'll put this on the freehand system, but for this sample, I'm just gonna leave it next to my machine. There's also a little guide that comes with the 43 foot that you can use, and that little guide snip, slips onto the machine and will hold your um, thread in place as well. But here we go. So all you wanna do is just move this through. Now, of course, in our example, we're gonna do perfect circles, and I'm gonna leave a tail when I start so that I can tuck them under so that you can't see where I stopped or started. But I think the most important thing for you to do when you get started is just literally try on a little scrap just to see how it works for you. And you don't really have to worry about stitch regulation or anything because you're not gonna see your stitches all that much. Now here for the video, I'm using white thread, but that's really mostly so that you can see what I'm doing. So there's a little sample of using the number 43 foot. 
So here I want to kind of show you something. So this is a little sample that I was trying out with some different thread. Now this is the Razzle that we carry by Wonderfill. This is an eight weight um, rayon thread. Now this is quite thin as you can see the difference between that and the La Spiga. So this if you look down here, it didn't always get stuck each time. So maybe I would like have to make a little bit of adjustments for this, um, but it's not ideal. Now, you know, I could do a little bit of test to get like a little bit wider zigzag stitch in here, but you can't go very wide, right? Otherwise you have like a little problem. So this isn't gonna be ideal for my project, because I seriously you don't want to have any skip stitches on this. However, that's why now I already have this ruler work foot. So if you have a ruler work foot, you can just get these couch clip inserts. And the couch clip inserts have a much smaller hole that'll make it easier for you when you do the thinner thread. So let me show you how to do that. Before you put the cup clip on, you want to make sure that you take that brass ring that makes this the adjustable part of the ruler work foot and that you adjust it so that it is as high as possible because putting the little couch clip on there makes the foot a little bit longer from here to here than normal. So adjust that all the way up to the highest position. I've used a different thread this time. I am using the Dazzle version of Razzle. The Razzle was the gray thread that I was using. That's this. Here's Razzle. And Dazzle has just a little bit of sparkle. So, but they make all kinds of Dazzle. And this is one that I think is super pretty. This is kind of like a light gray with all the color metallics threaded through there. But what I'm going to do is just do a simple little stipple just to kind of show you how this works. So once again, let's make sure we get that little couching clip on there. So now I'm just going to lower my presser foot and now I'm just going to stitch and I'm just going to hold things just a little bit. point out on this uh, razzle I kind of like how this gets this little boucle look to it um, if you don't like that you can go to a skinnier needle I'm using like a size 80 needle and uh, but you do have to go a little bit slower movement with your hands and a little bit faster with the machine you know to get these little circles done properly so I'm going to use this blue dazzle and, uh, and I'm going to use that on my quilt. So let's have at it. All right, now it's time to go around the circles and around the perimeter. I'm just going to leave a little tail. I've got my um, little couching clip on there and my foot and I'm just going to go around in counterclockwise formation and do this cute little design. All right, so once you do your circle, you're gonna feed it through your darning needle, your little razzle or your dazzle or whatever you're using. And then I simply just get it in there, but I don't go all the way through. I tuck it through under my material. There we go. That one's done, and now I'm just gonna do the other one. And then once you feed it through, I'm gonna give it a little trim. And now just do that three more times and around the perimeter.
Okay, you made it. On to block nine. So block nine is gonna be really fun. It is, uh, we're gonna use a technique called trapunto. And uh, for some of you, we're gonna have to do it differently if you do not have a Bernina 880 plus with that jumbo hoop. I'm gonna show you both ways, it's fine. I'm gonna show you the way I would do it if I had a five series, a seven series, or an eight series. So in the meantime, get stitching. And I also wanted to give a shout out to those of you that have joined us kind of midway. Um, I want you to know you don't have to stress about joining us live and in person. You can actually get started on block one and work your way through because we um, aren't gonna take this YouTube video down. This is gonna stay as long as YouTube is around. So um, it's great if you can catch up with us, but work at your own pace, don't rush it. There's a lot of details into this project and you know, a lot about this project is just learning how to use your machine and learning some of these techniques. So I'm really happy that you joined us. And if you wanna keep on with us and watch other tutorials or continue with the embroidery sampler, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy, it's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment and subscribe. All right, I'll see you next time.